All right, welcome back. In this video, let's revisit traffic analysis of Secure Store V2 application. When discussing the vulnerabilities in Secure Store V1 application, we have discussed about traffic analysis of Android applications. Now, once again, let's try to intercept the traffic of Secure Store V2 application and see how it looks like. Let's begin by configuring the proxy settings of this emulator. So I am going to settings, network and internet and let's tap on Wi-Fi and let's give a long click on Android Wi-Fi and click on modify network. And we are going to choose the proxy settings and we will make it manual and let's enter the IP address 10.0.2.2 and let's use the port 8080. Let's click save and the proxy settings should be configured now. Now let's move on to the burp suite and quickly change the interface to all interfaces. Click OK, say yes and we should be able to intercept the traffic from Secure Store V2 application now. Like we did earlier, let's first bypass jailbreak detection by using Frida and Objection. I'm going to launch the application using this Frida command. As you can see, the application is now launched and it is in paused state. Now let's use objection to bypass root detection as well as to resume the execution of this app. So let's type this command like we did earlier. Let's hit enter and root detection should be bypassed and the application should be launched if we type resume. All right, as you can see, the application is working fine. So let's set up the server 192.168.1.79. Now all we have to do is we will just have to log in using one of the accounts that we are aware of. I'm using secure store and secure store as the username and password and let's tap on sign in and as you can see here we are able to intercept the traffic and if you notice the password this is not in clear text anymore earlier when we were intercepting the traffic of secure store v1 application we were able to see the clear text password now, if you closely observe this, this is looking like a base64 encoded password, but it is not. It is base64 encoded text, but if you decode it, you're not going to get any clear text password because the actual password is encrypted. After that, the encrypted text is base64 encoded. So let's forward this request. And as you can see, we are logged in. Now let's click on view profile. If you look at this, the token is once again base64 encoded. So this particular token is also encrypted and thus we are seeing some base64 encoded text here. Now it should be pretty clear to us that all the sensitive data that is being sent to the server from the client is encrypted. The password, the token, everything is encrypted. Now. We have performed SQL injection on this particular parameter earlier, the token parameter from a view profile request. Now, if we want to perform SQL injection on this endpoint, or at least if we want to check if it is vulnerable to SQL injection, we will have to first decrypt the token and then we will have to insert some SQL injection payload. And after that, we will have to re-encrypt the tampered token and then we will have to forward it to the server. And then when the server decrypts this modified token and processes it, we may be able to exploit SQL injection if the API is vulnerable. Clearly, this is not going to be simple. We will have to first find out the encryption keys to be able to decrypt this payload. And then we will have to tamper the decrypted text. And then we will have to re-encrypt the payload using the keys that we have obtained. In a later video, we are going to do exactly that. We are going to obtain the keys by tracing the app using Frida. And then we are also going to perform SQL injection on this endpoint. Now the takeaway from this particular video is that all the sensitive data that is being sent over the network is 
encrypted using some custom encryption. Now let me quickly show you how this token is stored on the client side. I am quickly going to use objection once again and let's type env and let's just quickly navigate to the applications directory and there is a folder called shared underscore prefs so let's just navigate there and inside this we have user data dot xml so let's quickly type file cat user data dot xml if you look at this this is the authentication token that is being stored on the client side it is starting with wk3e now let's switch to burp suite and let's check if it is the same token that we are seeing in burp as you can see it is the same thing wk3e so the token is still stored on the client side but it is encrypted if we want to tamper the payload we will have to somehow reconstruct the encrypted payload and then we will have to send it to the server so as i mentioned we are going to see how to deal with it in a later video and that's all for this video see you in the next one